back to my channel. My name is Mandy and today's video is going to be a super fun, super chill Q&A style video which is actually one of my favorite style videos to film and it's also one of my favorite style videos to watch as well. I don't know about y'all but I just love to just sit down, have a snack, have a drink and watch people's Q&A videos. Some people ask some really cool, really interesting questions and I just like to hear the answers. I like to know people's backstory. I like to know like the layers of their onion, if that makes sense. And I don't know, I just think it's always fun. So that's what we're gonna be doing today. If y'all are interested in watching, then uh, please continue to do so because I have lots of questions here. I have pages upon pages. Well, actually it's just three pages to be honest, but I have lots of questions and let's get into it. So the first question is from a subscriber called KC Bass. I'm not really sure if that's how you pronounce it, but that's how I always say it in my head. And she asked, from what I remember, you moved states. Was it a long move? And would you ever move back to Louisiana? Um, yes, it was a very long move. It was about eight hours. So from South Louisiana, um, the Baton Rouge area of Louisiana to North Alabama. So that was about eight hours or so. I want to say 600 miles so it was quite a venture we had amos we had chickens we had cat and it was quite a challenge um whether or not i would move back to louisiana probably not i love and adore louisiana i love the culture i love the people i love the accent i love everything about louisiana but we had some traumatic experiences living in louisiana first of all the hurricanes. The hurricanes is like an every year thing. And we went through Katrina, we went through Rita, which was like a week or so later. We went through Gustav, which was in 2009. So you had Rita and Katrina in 2005, Gustav in 2009. And then in 2016, we lost our house, we lost our cars, we lost all of our belongings, as well as the majority of our parish, which I don't know if you know, but in Louisiana, the counties are actually called parishes and not counties. <laughs> so, um, yeah, we lost everything, pretty much everything in that flood. And we, every once in a while, we have to go back to Louisiana. And it gives me such anxiety to go back, to go and drive down my old road um, because we have family down there. It gives me, it makes me nauseated. It was such a traumatic experience for myself and my family. So we moved everybody up here. We got my parents here. We have my mother-in-law here, our kids here, Amos is here, the chickens, the cats, the whole kit and caboodle basically moved up here with us. And I, I love it here. Truly, I really do love it here. Now, will this be the end all be all of where we end up? Probably not. I would love to live in North Carolina or Idaho or um, Alaska or Canada or Costa Rica. Like there's so many different places that we would like to live eventually. Like after my parents pass away, after my mother-in-law passes away, we probably will uproot ourselves and move someplace else but definitely not back to Louisiana, at least not anytime soon in the future. So the second question comes from my good old friend, Mamacita57, and she says, this effed up inquiring mind wants to know if you actually wear anything under that makeup table when taping. Yes, I do. <laughs> and it's always the same thing. So I have what I deem as my filming clothes. So it's like my filming pants, if I'm filming, I'm going to be wearing these pants because I'll sit here and I do my makeup and I'll put like my makeup brush on them or I'll like wipe my hands on them. And if I'm wearing something nice, like I'll wear a nice top or something like that just for y'all for the camera to look presentable. <laughs> but down below, below the seams here, your girl is wearing some camo sweatpants. Okay, so the next question is from Miriam Trujillo. I hope I'm saying that correctly. And she asks, how do you keep your clothes organized? I find myself struggling with this. Um, as y'all know, I've mentioned this on my channel many, many times. I love to organize. I love taking things apart and then putting it together in a way that makes sense in my mind. And when it comes to clothing and shoes, I'm really no different. I like to have things like in an organized manner. So let's go into my closet and I'll show you what I'm talking about. So this is the entrance to my closet. And as you can see, it is right off the side of the bedroom. This is where I normally film my try-on hauls. And whenever you come in here, first thing you're going to see is this is Amos's bed. This is where he predominantly dwells until about three o'clock in the morning. And then he 
eats breakfast, and then we'll plop right down here. So then we span around, and this is where I store my shoes. And I kind of store them linear. That's just how I organize my shoes. And I like to put them like the wedges right here and the higher heels, and then kind of the van style sneakers, boots, and then tennis shoes. And then all of this st stuff down here is kind of like the catch-all. So um, right there is the famous like fish slippers. And then over here is my clothes closet. And I kind of had this organized by color. So I try to do like the creams into the whites and then the pinks into the reds and then like patterns, grays, blacks, camo, like hunter greens. And then this is all of my like coats and warm weather, no, cold weather stuff. So this is where I store all of my cold weather stuff. And then on this side is all of my jumpsuits and dresses. And I put it on this side because Amos likes to come in here and he grabs the fabric and will tear and rip at stuff. And so I put it on this side because it's a little bit harder to for him to grab it. So this is where I store all of my long sleeve stuff. And then let me take you where I store like my short sleeve stuff. So this is the entrance to the master bathroom. And whenever you turn on the lights, this is the closet. And it's not a very big closet in here, but this is where I store all of my short sleeve stuff and stuff that really doesn't belong in the other room. So I have it kind of color coordinated. I have like blacks and then into grays and navies and then greens, camos, um, pinks, whites, and then reds. And check this out. This was my husband's football jersey back in the day. Isn't that cute? And then this is where I store like my bras, pajamas, towels, you know, the whole drill. So that is how I organize. I hope this was helpful. So the next question is from Miss Esp and she asked, how can we be confident in our bodies and have you ever felt like you needed to change to be accepted by others? And this is a really good question. And I was actually thinking about the answer to this question last night when I was in the bathtub, which is a great place to think about the answer to this. One, because you are by yourself, and two, because you are completely stripped down. You have no makeup on, you are naked, and you really kind of self-analyze. And I find that regardless of whether you're a size 22 or a size two, everybody struggles with body self-confidence and self-confidence like it has an ebb and a flow and there are some days where i go in the bathroom and i take off all my clothes and i look at myself in the mirror and i feel beautiful i feel fantastic i feel like a goddess i just feel like everything is where it's supposed to be and you know i wouldn't change a thing and then there's other days where i go into the bathroom and I look at myself in the mirror and i want to change everything i'm not happy with the boobs i'm not happy with the butt i'm not happy with the cellulite i'm not you know what i'm saying so it all is an ebb and flow and self-confidence has to come from yourself it can't come from an outside source it can't come from your boyfriend it can't come from your husband it can't come from compliments and youtube like people on youtube tell me wonderful things and they also tell me really negative things as well and it ha the confidence has to come from yourself. So working on yourself, maybe doing an exercise, working on your mental health really does help. And yeah, that's my answer for you. I, there, there is no answer. It has an ebb and a flow and some days are good and some days are bad. So my battery just died, story of my life. <laughs> so the second part of your question was, have you ever felt like you needed to change to be accepted by others? And I'm just gonna say, abso freaking lutely So I can think of several instances as a young adult, as a teenager, as a young teenager, as a child, where if I would have dressed a certain way, act a certain way, behaved a certain way, then I would have been more accepted in some sort of way, in some sort of capacity. And honestly, as an adult, as a 40 year old woman, I look back on, you know, having a career and working with different people. And I honestly think it happens a lot more as we're adults um, because you go into a workplace and they have all of these different personalities and you just don't know where you fit in. Now, have I conformed to that? Not always, but I have before. Um, but as I've gotten older in my thirties and now I'm 40, I feel like I don't need to change for myself. I don't need to change for anybody else. You either like me because of who I am and all my weird quirks or you can just get the hell on. 
Okay, so question number five or six, I don't even know where we are right now, is from Teresa Eriks. I think that's how you say the last name. And she wants to know, are you married and do you have kids? And yes, I am married. I'll be married for 20 years, the big two O next month. Was that an O? Did I do O or did I do a B in sign language? Anyway, I'll be married for 20 years next month in June of 2020. And yes, I have two kids. I have two girls. I have one who is 19 and I have one who is 15. So the next question is from a girl, Jennifer L. Nelson. How you doing, girl? And she says, not spicy at all, but I would love to hear how you got Amos and what his first few days were like. Any baby Amos pictures would be a bonus. Okay, so I don't know if y'all know. A lot of y'all are new, a lot of y'all not. I have a potbelly pig. His name is Amos. He is almost five years old, just a couple of days and he is my heart and soul and my baby and I love him so damn much even though he's a jerk to me sometimes but um for my husband and I's 15th wedding anniversary um I had gone to a place called old time no was it called old time what was it called so the store was actually called Saks, not old time <laughs> so my husband just reminded me he's got a much better memory of that stuff than I do but regardless we were in there we were buying something for the guinea pigs that we had at the time I think and they had this display of these tiny so so cute pot belly pigs and I just fell in love I wanted one immediately my kids wanted one immediately but we didn't buy one so we left there we went home and I was just like talking to my husband and I was like oh my gosh they're so cute and I would love to have one so the next morning he got up and he says how about for our 15th wedding anniversary I get you a pot belly pig and I was like no yes <laughs> so we went there and they had like three left and I, I just fell in love with Amos he was so so cute he wasn't Amos at the time but he was so tiny and little did I know that they were probably sold way, way too early. Um, I don't think that they had the best business practices when it came to animals. And he was so, so small. They told us that he would be no more than 50 pounds and be as big as a Cocker Spaniel. And <laughs> he passed up 50 pounds and a Cocker Spaniel a long time ago. He is 400 pounds at least and he is as long, almost as long as I am. And regardless of how big he got, regardless of how quickly he grew, I just fell more and more in love with him. He's just such a gentle soul. He's such a quiet soul. And I just, I just love him. Now, don't get me wrong. He could be very grumpy. He can be mean. He can bite. Uh, he can be very intimidating. My mother-in-law and my parents are both afraid of him. They don't want to interact with him in any way because he is a little bit more protective of me and our family. But I just love him. I feel like he's almost a, a person trapped in a pig's body. So I just make sure to give him extra tender love and care. Okay, so the next question is from Miss Esp again, and she asks, will you consider doing a house tour or a day in the life video? And what do you do for a living besides YouTube? Um, yes, I think I would do a house tour. I did a clean with me video, which was kind of like a house tour, um, but I have other things that I could show y'all as well. So yeah, I'll probably do a house tour in the future, maybe in the next month or so, I'll do something like that. And then the second part of that question is, what do you do for a living besides YouTube? And I think I've answered this question in another Q&A video, but I'll go ahead and answer this anyway. Um, prior to 2016 and during 2016, I had like four jobs. I had my website, which was youhappybeauty.com. I still have it. I still work on it. Um, I was a freelance makeup artist for myself. So I had been doing that since like the early 2000s. Then I was a freelance makeup artist for Lancome uh, for about two years or so. And then I was a writer for a local newspaper. It, the newspaper was called The Creole, um, but after the flood it went out of business and the owner moved to North Carolina, so he had no interest in keeping it, um, even if I still wanted to work for them, which was one of the best jobs that I ever had because I had a beauty article, it was called Ask Mandy, and I did all the recipes for it. So like I, I love to cook. 
That was one of my passions. I love to create all these new recipes and then post it on there. And I got paid for it. So it was a really fun, really easy job. And I just loved it. Um, I got to be in a lot of Mardi Gras parades. And it was, it was just a lot of fun. So after 2016, uh, the flood, I lost all of my makeup kit. I lost all that stuff. And then we lived in the FEMA trailer for a while. Um, which I didn't work because I mean like there was no work <laughs> there was literally no work and then we decided to move up here and really and truly I, I, I want to pursue YouTube and that's really my full-time job right now I still work on my uh, website from time to time I get AdSense money from that so if you go to that website youhappybeauty.com and you click on a link or an affiliate link and you buy something I'll get a portion of that and I also get the AdSense clicks um, but yeah that's what I do it that's how I make my living okay so the next questions come from my friend Gloss Galore here on YouTube please check out her channel she has amazing makeup content and I can listen to her beautiful English accent talk all damn day long <laughs> um so she says i have questions <laughs> um what would your death row meal be so i'm gonna answer that really quickly a hamburger <laughs> i'm very very simple hamburger and fries that's what it'd be with a cookies and cream milkshake that is a meal fit for a king and it fits all the major food groups you have a golden ticket and you could either have a fancy handbag or fancy shoes what would you choose? <laughs> um, in all honesty, and this is probably going to be a really boring answer. I grew up um, a very middle class. My parents lived very below their means. We had a not a very big house, um, not fancy cars. I never had anything really fancy or expensive. And I have never in my adulthood owned shoes that cost over like 75 or $100 ever, ever in my life. Um, I've never had a fancy handbag and I've never owned fancy shoes. And I honestly, whenever I look at buying, say, a Louis Vuitton bag, which I drool over, a Gucci bag, I drool over because they're so, so pretty. I love how intricate they are and how fancy they are. But whenever I have the opportunity to buy something, which I have had the opportunity to buy one, I never, ever do. I just feel like I could help so many people with that money. That's just me. That's just how I feel. Um, so if I had the means like every day in life to buy something super fancy, Louis Vuitton shoes or um, Christian Louboutins or, you know, something like that, I just don't think that I would in all honesty. And then the next question is, what's your favorite holiday? I want to say Christmas, but... I also really, really enjoy Halloween. I love dressing up. I love putting on the makeup. I love like the whole like spooky vibe of it. That's just kind of my personality. So I'd probably say Halloween. <laughs> and then the final question is if you could have someone else do uh, one household chore for you for the rest of your life, what would it be? I would say that's a cross between folding clothes because I really, I mean, I like folding towels, but I don't like doing the socks and I don't like doing the shirts and I don't like any of that stuff or emptying the dishwasher. Your girl can't stand to empty a dishwasher. I hate it. Okay, so the final group of questions comes from Miss Shirley Stevenson. How you doing, girl? And she says, LOL, yes, I definitely have questions for the lady who keeps a gorgeous domesticated pig as a pet. Thank you so much. That hit truly at home. <laughs> She says, what is the very first thing that you do when you wake up each day? Um, the first thing that I do when I wake up each day after I go to the bathroom is I hobble to the living room. I sit down, I plop on the couch and I take my morning Tylenol and my morning allergy medicine and my thyroid medicine because I have Hashimoto's, hypothyroidism, all that stuff. Um, but I have a really bad back that aches in the morning. And so that is the first thing that I do. If you hear my dogs barking, they play in out there somewhere. So don't worry about that. The second part of her question is, where's the coolest place you have ever visited and why? And that would probably be a tie between two separate places. Both of them are in California. The first of which is called Carmel, California. And it's this very small, very quaint, quiet, very, very wealthy town 
in California. I think it's south of San Francisco. And we visited around 1996, 1997. So I was around 16, 17 years old. And I just remember it being a very quiet, very beautiful, very, very wealthy area. It was so clean. It was pristine. There was like Rolls Royce after Rolls Royce parked on the side of the road. Um, we stayed in this really cute bed and breakfast that had like the double doors. So it would like, they could open and close separately. So you could open up one and let the fresh air in, or you could open up the bottom part and let your dogs, animals, that kind of thing in. And we slept in that uh, room, in that bed and breakfast with the top door open. So it was really nice and cool, very chilly first thing in the morning. And I remember waking up and there was this gorgeous, huge parrot just propped up on the door and it was just the most amazing thing so carmel i'm not sure if you are familiar but they have uh pebble beach which is like world renowned for the pga pga tours and such and they have a lot of different places that are like celebrity owned um clint eastwood owns a place or used to own a place i can't remember what it's called at this point um but it was just a really really fun very very interesting place to visit and the second place is san francisco um because they had one the golden golden gate bridge and alcatraz and i remember going to alcatraz and you have to wait for this ferry and there's all these seals at least at that time there was all these seals they would like prop up and it stunk it smelled like seal poop <laughs> but it was really i'd never seen a seal before so it was really really cool and then visiting Alcatraz, taking the tour of Alcatraz. It was amazing. And it's just unforgettable. I loved it. San Francisco was so clean. It had a really, a really cool kind of vibe about it. Um, it was like steep and, and flowers everywhere. And it was just a really, really cool place. So the third part of your question is the worst place and why. And that would have to be, and this is no offense to anybody who lives there. So please, if you're watching this and you live in this place, I'm not attacking you or the place that you live, but Newark, New Jersey. So when I was young, my dad worked for an industrial plant, a refinery in Baton Rouge, and he was transferred to um, a plant in Newark, New Jersey. He was gone for a good long while. And so my mom and I went up there and stayed for an extended period of time. And I would get very, very motion sick. And I remember just getting off the plane, taking a taxi to the place that my dad was staying at. And the taxi smelled just so much of exhaust. I was sitting in the front seat because my mom knew that I was sick and I would like get car sick. And I just uh, hurled in the front seat. And the driver, the taxi driver, reminded me of the bus driver in South Park. She was just wild haired, wild eyed didn't give a shit just like really really mad that I threw up in her taxi and I remember walking down the street with my parents going to a restaurant and it was like smog and fumy and I was just sick the whole time I was there so I was young I was might been like six or seven years old but that was like the worst place that I've been every place else has been really nice but Newark New Jersey I'll, I will never go back. And then the final question that Miss Shirley had is, what's more important to you, your happiness, your contentment, or your basic security? And actually, I had to look up the definition of all three. So the difference between happiness, the difference between contentment, and the difference between security. Um, because you can be happy all day long and not know what's going on. Happiness is you're just absolutely full of bliss for every reason, for everything. Um, contentment is a little bit different. You're satisfied, you're content in the status quo. And then the basic security is you feel secure in your body, you feel safe, you feel at one with yourself, and that is also important. So my thought process behind this is, I guess it's kind of deep, but ignorance is bliss. And if you don't question things, if you don't understand things, if you take life as it is and you're just happy about it, you don't change and you don't learn. So my answer would be probably contentment because I want to know, I want to question, I want to like get deep into the rabbit hole of things because you can't be content without security as well. So I think it would have to be contentment.
I hope that makes sense. Maybe I'm like my mind is going too too quickly for my mouth, but I just I think contentment would be better than happiness because ignorance is bliss and also security. So anyway, <laughs> that's the last answer. I hope y'all enjoyed this Q and A. Thank you to everybody who asked questions. I really appreciate it. I always enjoy these. They're so much fun to watch and so much fun to film. And I feel like y'all kind of get a deeper understanding of the way my brain works and it's all weirdness that it is. <laughs> and yeah, if you enjoyed this video, please give it a like and a subscribe. I would greatly appreciate it. I hope you are having a fantastic day, regardless of where you are in the world. Please stay safe and stay healthy, and I'll be seeing y'all very, very soon. Bye, y'all.